Hello, everyone, and welcome to your chipmunk read-along book. Every time you hear Alvin sound his harmonica, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, if you're ready, we'll start the TV Chipmunks. And remember to turn the page every time you hear Alvin's harmonica. The chipmunks were almost ready to leave for school. Theodore stuffed some more food into his mouth. Simon was busy finishing a science book, and Alvin couldn't take his eyes off the newspaper headline, Rock Show on TV Tomorrow Night. Dave Seville, who took care of the chipmunks, came to the table and reminded them, Hurry up, boys, or you'll be late. Today's the big day. You have a chance to win the school talent show. But Alvin was still so engrossed in the newspaper headline that he muttered, A school talent show isn't so great. I wish we could be on that TV rock show. Even though the talent show wasn't the same as a real live rock concert, it was still fun. And the chipmunks won first place with their singing. As Alvin accepted the winner's trophy, his classmate Julie cooed. I bet. Someday wasn't good enough for Alvin, and he boasted, We're famous now. In fact, we're going to play the rock show on TV tomorrow night. Another classmate, Scott, who had won second place in the talent show, scoffed. Oh, yeah. I'll believe that when I see it. Seeing his startled brothers, Alvin turned to them and whispered, Don't worry. We'll go see the show's producer. After school, the chipmunks took a bus to the television studio. Alvin led the way to the front gate, where a guard was on duty. The guard stopped them and demanded, Just where do you think you're going? Alvin replied, To see the producer about the rock show. Nobody sees Harrison winners without an appointment. Now scram. Just then, a delivery man pushed a rack of costumes past the chipmunks. That gave Alvin an idea, but he simply turned to Theodore and Simon and said, Come on, guys. We might as well go home. A few minutes later, the guard looked down and saw a giant cake tap dancing its way toward him. As it danced, the cake sang. It's Mr. Winter's birthday and we're here to sing A happy birthday wish to the rock and roll team So let us buy these for our feet that's tired Cause if we don't get in, guess who gets fired? The guard waved them past, saying Go, go right in and please don't let Mr. Winters know that I forgot his birthday As the chipmunks danced their way into the building, the guard did a double take Then he suddenly shouted Hey, wait a minute! Mr. Winner's birthday isn't for six months! Stop that cake! From inside the cake came Simon's voice exclaiming, He's on to us! And Theodore's voice asking, What do we do? Run for it! Shouted Elvin, and he skidded around the corner as more guards joined the chase. Alvin said. The chipmunks darted into a doorway marked Studio B. Little did they know that the Cooking with Kay show was on the air. And when your cake is done, it can look like this, said Kay as she opened the door of the pretend oven on the set. Kay reached into the oven and pulled out a giant cake. Breathing heavily, she struggled to lift it onto the counter. Shall we? She asked the studio audience. Then, she screamed as the chipmunks popped out and scattered. Alvin shouted to his brother. For the second time that day, the chipmunks raced down the hall. They could hear the guards coming after them. When they reached an office, Alvin pushed open the door and said, Who are you? asked the man inside. 
A sign on his desk read, Harrison Winters. Alvin gasped. Mr. Winters, uh, uh, we're the chipmunks. He turned to Simon and Theodore and said, Here's our chain. Get it, guys? And the chipmunks burst into song. <laughs> When they had finished, Alvin explained to Mr. Winters, We've gotten thousands and thousands of requests to be on your television rock show. Our fans write all the time. Mr. Winters mused, Really? Well, you bring me those letters and I'll make sure you get on the show. That night, Alvin organized things. He began by explaining, Simon's computer will help us turn out those fan letters in no time. Then we'll get on the show, and even Scott will be impressed. Simon typed on his computer. Alvin and Theodore wrote letters by hand. As the hours went by, the stacks of mail grew higher and higher. As Alvin scribbled furiously, he asked, How are you doing? Simon answered, 16,482. And you? Alvin said, 585. What about you, Theodore? Four, said Theodore sleepily as he drew a heart on the back of an envelope. At breakfast the next morning, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore were exhausted. Theodore mumbled, Then his head drooped and he fell asleep in his cereal bowl. Dave came over to the table and told them, I think you boys look sick. You better go back to bed. Alvin pretended he was sick and said, <laughs> Maybe you're right, Dave. Then Theodore asked groggily, So now that, after all that work? Surprised, Dave asked, Work? What work? Dave. He doesn't know what he's saying, said Alvin hastily, and he and Simon dragged Theodore away. This ought to fool Dave, said Alvin a short time later. He carefully tucked three hot water bottles under the bed cover. Each bottle had a face drawn on it. Then Alvin added, Now to get this fan mail over to the TV studio. Each chipmunk grabbed a huge sack filled with letters. Then they quietly tiptoed out of their rooms, down the stairs, and past Dave, who was in the kitchen. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Dave was saying, This oatmeal should make them feel better. He went upstairs, carrying a tray with three bowls on it, and opened the chipmunk's bedroom door. The window shades were down, and the room was dark. Dave whispered to himself, Ah, oh, they're fast asleep. Then he placed his hand on one of the chipmunks' foreheads and cried out in alarm, Oh my, they're burning up with fever. I've got to get a doctor. Meanwhile, the chipmunk stood anxiously in Mr. Winter's office waiting for his reaction to the letters piled on his desk. Finally, Mr. Winters said, All of this mail is very impressive. Okay, boys, you're on the rock show. Go to Studio A. The chipmunks cheered. Hooray! You won't regret this, Mr. Winters. They turned to leave, and Harrison Winters settled back to read some of the letters. He pulled out one at random and read, We love your act. Hope to see you on the rock show. Sincerely, Harrison Winters. What? Mr. Winters gasped, then shouted out, Hey! These letters are fakes! Come back here, you three! But it was too late. By the time Mr. Winters arrived at Studio A, the chipmunks were already rocking and rolling on the air. <laughs> The 
audience loved them. A smile began to spread across Harrison Winter's face as he said, Hey, these guys are really good. Back at the house, Dave was very worried as he asked Dr. Seth E. Scope, How are my boys, Doc? Clearing his throat, Dr. Scope said, <coughs> Well, I'd say you have three very healthy hot water bottles. Dave pulled back the bed covers and exclaimed, They tricked me! Here I thought they were sick in bed and... Suddenly, Dave heard familiar singing. He ran down to the living room with the doctor close behind. Pointing to the television set, Dave said, My boys on TV? Wait till I get my hands on them. Dave rushed to the television studio where Alvin greeted him nervously with a... <laughs> Hello! Then Alvin motioned toward an excited Mr. Winters and said... Some surprise, huh, Dave? Dave nodded at Mr. Winters, then replied... You bet, Alvin. And I've got a surprise for you. Mr. Winters, still smiling, boomed... You boys were great! Just great! Dave led the three chipmunks toward the door and said... Let's go home now, boys. As they walked, Alvin thought, A surprise waiting at home? Dave is really taking this well. The next day, Alvin found out just what Dave's surprise was. Complaining as he mowed the lawn, Alvin said, A new lawnmower wasn't exactly the kind of surprise I had in mind, Dave. Dave chuckled and called out. <laughs> Keep mowing, Alvin, and you'll be a hit here, too. <laughs> <laughs>